Many Israelites went back to worship the divinities of the nearby peoples with whom they traded and married. And they abandoned Jehovah, the God of their fathers. Therefore, Jehovah, the omnipotent, creator of heaven and earth, gave them into the hands of their enemies. Forward in the name of Baal! In the name of Baal, let's go! These marauders, mostly Philistines, mercilessly raided their lands and stole crops, livestock and their women, devastating and burning everything they found in their path. Take everything! To urge them to return to their faith, Jehovah was continuously sending prophets and judges such as the wise Deborah and the powerful Gideon to his people. But the children of Israel only obeyed them to save themselves from danger. As soon as the danger was gone, they went back to betraying Jehovah, sinning and worshipping Baal and gods made of clay or stone, which were worshipped by other people. What do we do now? This is the hand of Jehovah. He is the one punishing his people. In the village of Zoreah, in the land of Canaan, lived Manoah, an Israeli of the family of the Danites who was still faithful to the Lord. Manoah did not have any children, but one day an angel sent by Jehovah appeared to his wife and announced to her that she'd soon conceive and bear a son who would be a Nazarite that would be exclusively devoted to God from the womb to the day of his death. And so it happened. What will you call him? Samson, son of the sun. Great God of the Philistines, help your people! Great God of the Philistines, help your people! The baby grew, day after day, year after year. His hair was sleek, with 12 locks as a mark of his consecration to God. According to tradition, it should never be cut. Mother, please listen to me. I am listening, but you only matter today. And you really want to marry her? 
I like her a lot, Mother. She's beautiful. I liked her right away, and I, I want to marry her. But she's a Philistine. She worships gods of stone. She's different from She'll us. learn to worship the true god, I'm sure. When I introduce myself to her father, he'll throw me out because we're Israelis. If he's a good father, he'll throw me out. He'll ask me where you'll be taking his daughter. And you, Father, tell him I'll continue to live in his house. He'll want a really great deal of money. Give him what he asks for and keep the fruits of my work for yourself, father. If our son wants to marry that Philistine girl, I think it could be God's will. Don't you think, Mano? Listen to my mother, father. She bore me and she reads my heart. <laughs> We love you very much, Samson. We'll both go with you now to the village of the girl's father. I bless you, father. Well, it's settled. Mm -hmm. Our children will marry. When the wedding date was set with Zafit, the Philistine girl, it was decided that the wedding ceremony would last seven days. But before the wedding, Samson was tested by Jehovah. One day, going to the vineyard of Timnah, Samson was attacked by a huge, roaring lion. Remaining calm, Samson faced it, caught it, and tore it to pieces as if it were a toy. Then he left the dead lion to the vultures as prey. Sometime later, Samson passed by the same way, and he wanted to see what had happened to the body of the lion. He found it putrefied, but still intact, covered by a swarm of bees coming out from a huge hole in the belly. Samson put his hand in and drew it back full of honey. He ate the honey on his return home. The day of celebration finally came. As a game, Samson set a riddle for the guests. Explain it to me within the seven days of the party. I'll give you 30 tunics and 30 clothes. But if you're not able to guess it, you'll give me 30 tunics and 30 clothes. This is the riddle. Food came out of the eater, sweet came out of the strong. He explained the solution to his bride, who was forced by her father to explain it to the guests. What is the answer to the riddle? <laughs> and so I revealed the solution. <laughs> when Samson found out that his bride had disclosed to the Philistines the solution of the riddle, he became very angry. No! Then the father of Zaphit took back the word he had given to Samson and gave his daughter in marriage to another man, a Philistine friend of his, and he forbade Samson from seeing her and Samson declared war on the Philistines. Samson took refuge in a cavern on the rocks of Etam. One day, while he was standing and looking at a wide wheat field, he thought about which way he could take revenge on the hated Philistines, and everything became clear to him. He went back into the cavern where he had locked up 300 jackals he captured, and he took one of them. Now the Philistines will know of what Samson is capable of. He tied a little sheaf of dry straw to the tail of the jackal. He lit it and let the poor animal run across the wheat field. Then he did the same thing with all the other jackals, and when they crossed the wheat field too, they caused an enormous fire and the loss of the wheat, of course. Samson's work. What, what will the Philistines then? do what to us now? To us? Samson, we are forced to deliver you to the Philistines, otherwise they'll kill us all. You must come with us. Samson offered his hands and obeyed as they were tied together. Then he was fastened with 20 ropes around his body as though he were a wild beast. 
the people took him and delivered him to the Philistines to be punished for what he had done. Now we'll tear your eyes out and burn you! But while he was surrounded by the Philistines, Samson showed his incredible strength once more. With a violent pull, he freed himself to confront the soldiers with his bare hands. Then he took a bone from the skeleton of an animal and began to whirl it like a club against the men and against their swords until he had defeated them all. <laughs> After checking round, he mounted a camel and quickly disappeared. For the people of Israel, Samson became a hero, since he was able to single-handedly defeat the Philistines. He became a legend in the villages and cities inhabited by the people of Israel. Samson is a hero. He defeated all the Philistines by himself. And Samson became a legend to the Hebrew people. For over 20 years, he was a judge in Israel, and the people turned to him when they needed protection and justice. And for over 20 years, no one was ever able to defeat him. After wandering from one place to another, finally Samson arrived in the city of Gaza, but the Philistines were waiting for him, and that same night they closed the city gates to trap him and to take their revenge. At about midnight, Samson went towards the gate to get out, and he realized then the trap the Philistines had set. With the enormous strength of his bare hands, he tore down the gate and escaped their revenge once more. Samson fled into the valley of Sorek. And when he arrived in a square, he saw a young woman who was drawing water from a well. He looked at her for a long time. Then he dismounted the camel, moved closer, and said, Excuse me, I'm thirsty. Will you give me some water to drink? <sighs> who are you? My name is Delilah, stranger. You are beautiful, and your eyes are wonderful. I'm a Philistine. Which region do you come from? If you want, you may come into my house. I am an Israeli, and I'm faithful to my God. Come with me. I'll take you to my father. Delilah took Samson into her father's home to refresh and to feed him. Samson, enchanted by her, fell in love with her to the extent that he stayed for some time in her home. And then, one day. Delilah, we are friends of your father. Do you recognize us? Yes, I know you. But what do you want from me? Tell me. Nothing you can't do. I'll see if I can help you. You want your father alive, don't you, Delilah? Why? What has he done? What do you want from him? We already talked to him, and we established that... Your father and us have established that you have to deliver Samson, the Israeli. Me? How will I do that? You must try to seduce him and force him to tell you where his strength comes from. You must do this, Delilah. But he'll never disclose his secret to me. If you succeed, Delilah, we will give you... We will give you 1,100 silver pieces. Otherwise, you will lose your father. <laughs> Delilah tried every possible means to make Samson divulge his secret, but Samson made fun of her. Threatened by the lords of the Philistines, Delilah tried desperately one last time. This wine is nectar. Give me some more. You live in my house, drink my father's wine, sleep under his roof, and have your way with me. But your heart is cold. Why do you talk to me like that? What have I done? You don't trust me, Samson, and you don't love me. Your curiosity is annoying, Delilah. And you jealously protect your secrets like a child. <laughs> 
My strength is all here, Delilah. It's all in my hair. When I was born, I was consecrated to the God of Israel, and my parents promised that my hair would never be shaven. It's a gift of your God, then. The generous wine and Delilah's tenderness made Samson fall asleep. But the Philistines were hidden there, ready to go into action at a sign from Delilah to take Samson and put him in chains. While Samson slept, Delilah, armed with a huge and sharp knife, cut one by one all Samson's plaits and let them fall to the ground. Then she showed herself at her front door and called for the Philistines who ran up in great number. Delilah! It's useless calling her. Delilah betrayed you, Samson. There's no need to beat him up. We blinded him. Now we'll take him to Gaza. He'll push the lever of the well for the rest of his life. Look at him for the last time. This was the strongest of the Israelites. The Philistines took Samson to the city of Gaza and shut him in a prison. The prison of Gaza was a fortress in the center of the city. It was protected by high walls and by an enormous iron gate. Inside it, there was a courtyard with a big millstone. Samson was chained to it and forced to make it turn. The people of the city had become curious because of the fame that preceded Samson's arrival, so they gathered there in great number at the gate and commented upon him. Did you see what they did to him? He was the strongest man in the world, and a woman was enough to reduce him to this. Now Samson had an enormous trouble turning that millstone, because working animals were used to do it generally. Even the last donkey that had been freed from that tough work seemed to like making fun of him. At sunset, after another day of that extremely tough work, Samson was unchained and taken to a wretched cell where he spent his nights. Only comforted by the faint light of the moon filtering through a little window. Lord, I cry my sin. I beg your forgiveness and I, I cry my sin, Lord. Forgive me. Time went by, and the day came when the Philistine princes gathered to celebrate and offer to Dagon, their god, a great sacrifice. Today is Dagon's day, and Samson will be sacrificed. They say that Samson can jump up like a cricket and strike the enemies without seeing them. Do you think the priest will remove his chains? No, no, it would be a risk for all of us Philistines. The guards should have already killed him. Death to him! 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 Let me pass, I want to kill him. Back off! Death to him! 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 Dagon, he's the greatest and strongest of the Philistines' gods. But he's a god of stone, a ridiculous god of stone. It's not my god. My god is Jehovah alone, the Almighty. Go in. The god is waiting for you. Don't make him wait, Samson. Oh, god, Dagon, today we offer sacrifice to you. Oh, my 
Almighty God, Dagon, send us your protection. Samson. Do you recognize my voice, Samson? Delilah, yours is the voice of sin and betrayal. Then you recognize me, Samson. You still remember me. I am no longer afraid of you. Today is your turn to be afraid, because you will be sacrificed to our god. Don't exult in your victory, Delilah. Look at my hair! <gasps> 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 It grew back. Jehovah's enemies and all those who betrayed will now be punished. By the Lord who gave him back his terrible strength, Samson took great revenge on all the Philistine princes and people that were inside and outdoors of the temple, because the number of Philistines that died beneath the wreckage was greater than the number of those that Samson had killed during his whole life. His brothers and all those in the house of his father set out from their land to take Samson's lifeless body and bring it home with them. His kindred turned back to their lands with the coffin and buried it and paid homage to Samson in the sepulcher of Manoah, his father. In his youth, Samson had been a judge in Israel for 20 years. <laughs>